Good morning. I am at Royal Winchester today. The green fee is £90. However, we're here on a voucher, so none of us have paid. Excellent. Don't know anything about the course other than from the yellow tees it's a par 71 and from the whites back there it's a par 72. Looking at the card there's a number of holes under 350 yards which will give us options to hit fairway woods off the tee which is a good thing because my driver and I aren't exactly on speaking terms at the moment. This first is a shorty and I tell you, it's so tempting to get out the driver and blow it over the corner and just have a short little pitch to the green. But um, as it's the first shot of the day, I don't think that would be wise. In fact, I settled on the five wood, which would happily get me to the right hand side of the fairway beyond those two bunkers. Nice and safe. A bit like that. And then it's just a short flick up the hill with the sand wedge. Get up. Oh. What do you mean, get up? <laughs> That's nice. Ooh, I'm not even sure they've actually put the flag on the green. <laughs> <laughs> well done, good for. Second hole, 350. This is about my outer limit for taking a three wood off the tee. So this is the three wood. If I hit a decent one, I'm only going to have a wedge or a nine iron in. And that's more than a decent one. We'll find it when we get there. And we had this view all day. The green is way down in a bowl. You can't even see the flag from the camera. I can only see the top six inches. But it's just a wedge in. So it isn't difficult. Just don't know till you get there. The fairways are fantastic. If only I could find one. And this will show you just how good these greens are. A long lag. Perfect length, no bumps, no bounces, nice and smooth. We go to the third. Now this is slightly downhill and the green was running away from me. So I opted for a club less. As it happened, that was a poor choice. Because I've come up short, I didn't get all of it. When you're short and everything's running away from you, then it gets a bit tricky. If I take the five iron off the tee, I would have at least got past the hole in one rather than past the hole in two. So the first bogey is incoming. Now I'm not keeping my score today for the simple fact that later on I don't complete a hole. So there's no point in me putting up whether I'm over par or under par or whatever. First time out with a driver, fairway bunker down the right, but it's not in play for me, I can easily get past this. But as you can see the fairways are mowed towards you and half of it away from you, creating that stripe. 120 up the hill, into the breeze, 8 iron. Well I'm guessing that the trees were stopping the breeze because that has gone way to the back. And I'm more or less aiming at Neville's feet here for the chip. There's so much borrow on this. But this mowing of the fairways, half against you and half with you, does create a little confusion as to where the edge of the fairway is. Going with driver, but I should be going with three wood. This is the problem sometimes when you're in the middle of the day and there are groups of golfers behind you. It's 84, I lasered it at 115. That's why I got the wedge. 
Of course, I didn't laser the flag. I lasered the trees behind. All because I'm rushing. What's into the wind? And that's what happens when you are playing in a four ball, really, and trying to record. It all gets a bit difficult. And strangely, the least important thing becomes actually playing the golf. But that's what happens. Wow, Simon. Yeah, to record at a busy time of day, you really need a cameraman on a golf cart doing it all for you. Hello, I'm just editing the video. Now, the last place I belong is on a busy golf course with a camera. I'd normally tee off sometime after lunch when it was dead quiet, but we had a middle of the morning tea time and it was very busy. So what you're going to see is an awful lot of mistakes where I've simply plunked the camera, hit record, dash to the ball, hit it, dash back, pick up the camera and go. So there's absolutely no thought whatsoever going on. It was also championship week. So what that meant was a lot of the flags were around the outside extremities of the greens. And with the what I would call an infinity fairway where you can't quite see where you're going and an infinity green where you can't actually see the surface of the green you've just got this flag and you've basically got a guess there's there's an awful lot of bad shots when you add in also that the greens were quite hard I didn't repair a pitch mark all day then you start to play timid golf you start trying to bounce the ball onto the green uh, and then when you fail then you're chipping and because the green is hard you lost control of the ball and it's running a long way past. So there's a lot of bad golf but the golf course itself was fantastic. Fairways were wonderful, the greens were smooth once you'd got on them. Um, and everything around the clubhouse was out of this world but it was incredibly difficult to play on the day I think if I'd gone out at about 1.30 in the afternoon when the place was empty and quiet we would have a completely different score so enjoy the video what's left of it and you really need to watch to the end because there is a bit of a career shot towards the end of this round Back to editing. The first infinity fairway and it's on an incredibly difficult hole. I can just about see the lip of a bunker, which I assumed was in the left rough, so I played to the right of it. Unfortunately, to the right of it was the right rough, because the bunker was actually in the middle of the fairway. So now we're playing catch up and I literally am running round the golf course trying to stay ahead of the game behind. You know, we are a four ball of seniors, including a lady who only drives it about 125 yards. We played in four hours and five minutes, and we lost 10 minutes letting a group through. So we'd have beaten four hours. We weren't slow, but there didn't seem to be enough time for me to actually play golf. So it's no surprise that the score suffered somewhat. And I really am no good at putting over a yard or so of fringe. I should have chipped that really. Thank goodness for a putter. The second par three and the green is up there on a shelf. Flag is back left. I've hit a decent shot to the back right. But it didn't hold. And as you can see there's another two balls off the back. It was incredibly difficult to hold these greens today. And with the flag being in this back corner, 
there was a fair bit of break as well. So we rack up another bogey. And we go off to a slightly more familiar hole. 356, slight dog leg to the left. Three wood. Try and hit a little draw. This is a cracker of a hole. No, but you're fine there. I'm fine. Eight iron in. The shot tracer is incorrect. I hit the front right down the banner. It's nice to be hitting really good golf shots again. Well protected at the front. Through the back. No pitch mark. What a shame. I did. Came a little bit. Oh, he's looking for a ball now, so. so we'll finish the hole and we'll wait for them. On to the first par five. And this is so narrow down here. Three wood is the choice. And it's a damn good choice. This is a cracking hole. 476 yeah, down the hill. Yeah. You can get there in two. We've just let a group through, so I've been stood here waiting 10 minutes to hit this shot. Perhaps it wasn't a good choice when you've had a wait. Made it to the path. Now I've stood on the cart path, so I am actually entitled to a drop, but my nearest point of relief would be deeper into the heavy stuff so we play it as it lies didn't do too badly well played, chipping a putt for a par and we get out of jail yeah that is a fantastic hole and a par 5 you don't actually need a driver on it's fun really we got a number 10, which is another par 5. Now you can't see a great deal of the fairway, but you can see the dark and the light stripe. And I found that quite confusing over where is the actual left edge of the fairway. It's further left than that. And to show that the brain is completely out to lunch, instead of knocking an iron down here, then we have a shy with a three wood. I just simply wouldn't do this if I'd had time to think. We're up in the deep stuff. I had a look for it, never found it. So we go on to 11. Flag is right on the front, so eight iron draw. But it didn't draw. This is horrid. Ah, good luck with this one, mate. His balls aren't, aren't any good either. <laughs> 12 is straight par 4. And you can actually see enough of the fairway to know where left and right is. Now that looks terrible, but it is in the fairway. Yeah, that's all right. I still got it. Shot tracer does not do it justice. And a green that you can't quite see where the green is. So again, trying to bounce it into a front flag with the 7 iron. This is what I mean about playing timid golf. Ian said, do you want to mark that or do you want to play it? I said, I'll just play. Something and nothing, wasn't it? And we walk it's off a lovely with a 4. Now the next hole is a long par 4, but you can't actually see very much. I can, I've can i lasered the fairway bunker down there, and even though it's 438, I do not have space to hit driver. Well, I have no idea. Which leaves us a 5 wood. Yeah, I would have liked to have hit dri driver here and got... 25 yards closer, but that's life. 
and that's Do life too. too. And the rest of this is just a bit of a mess. It's the sort of mess you make when you spend your round of golf looking behind you at a group of people rather than looking forward at the target and making good decisions. Fourteen's a short par four. Now Neville said, why don't you drive it over the corner at the green? I said, no thanks. I'll just get it out to the right like I did on the first. Right. Poor swing, but it is fine. Back flag, gap wedge. Again, you can't see the green. Now Ian and I both hit good shots and we both thought, yeah, that's fine and we were both off the green. I don't think I've That's ever nice. had an eight foot yeah. putt before yeah. from off the green. From where Neville stood, there's barely seven feet. Another infinity fairway. It, it's just guesswork really. It's just trying to figure out where one side of the fairway is. 160 up the hill, six iron greens well protected there's plenty of bunkers on this course to attract your attention it'd be off the back <laughs> Next to par 5, it's plenty wide enough. You don't have to worry about trying to drive into a narrow neck. But it's just not being quite 100% certain which bit's fairway and which bit's rough. Two fairway bunkers aren't in play. We go straight over the top of them. Bunker, I think. Which leaves us a short pitch. Now I've been trying to pitch more with a square club face rather than Fuck an it. open club face and it's not going well shall we say. That little bit of openness that I have which takes a few yards off when I square it up, I'm always hitting it too damn far. Oh, I could have used that one. We dash off to the par three. Lovely par three this. All I did was push record, walk to the ball and hit it. Didn't even have a practice swing. And I took about two and a half inches of turf before the ball. But you can see how pretty these holes are and how well presented it all is. Even if I don't particularly agree with the design. And you're not going to. You're not going to enjoy the design of every golf course that you play. That's just life. When my mind is elsewhere. Dash off to 18. Another short par 4. Going with 3 wood because there is an absolute bomb hole of a bunker in the middle of the fairway. Cheerio. I'm just looking back at them, you see, and just
four. One four. One four. Oh, four. Oh, four. Oh, four. Oh, Cheers, Ian. Thank you very much. Well done, yeah, man. Cheers, Neville. Well done.